Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben and I am a self-taught web developer who went from zero to paid full stack in eight months via the Odin project. And in this video, I wanted to go over whether or not the Odin project is right for you and some of the considerations you might wanna make before starting the Odin project if you are someone who wants to learn web development and you're not sure how to learn web development. There's many different ways you can learn web development today. You can go to university and get a degree. You can get a diploma. You could take a boot camp. You can use free curriculums like the Odin Project or Free Code Academy, etc. There are many different options out there for you. And each one is going to suit different people based on their learning styles, uh, how much money they want to spend, and how they want the course material provided to them, and whether or not they want accountability from peers and, and teachers, etc. So the Odin Project is classed as a open source, free, full stack, curriculum. It's self-guided, self-paced. There's a great community surrounding the Odin project on a Discord where you can get help, but there's no teachers. There's no one reviewing your code. It's all up to you to go through course by course, not skip or cheat or anything like that, and be honest with yourself and attempt every single assignment and project that you can in order to learn and develop and grow. Okay, and you can go the extra step looking at other people's code, trying to work with other people as well to get a sense of that. But that's really, it, 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 in, in its essence, is up to you to complete this. And it's gonna be the same with other free courses like Free Code Academy. Conversely, if you go to university or a bootcamp, it's all structured for you, okay? And you're gonna have a, a teacher, you're gonna have peers, you're gonna have tests. These kinds of things hold you accountable. So if you need those kinds of things in order to learn and study, then I would say the Odin project might not be the best uh, course of action for you, okay? But if you're the kind of person who's very goal-oriented, focused and driven, and above all, have a good work ethic, then I think the Odin project might be the right choice for you. And it's not to say that someone who chooses something else doesn't have these qualities, but in order to succeed at the Odin project, you must have a good work ethic. I think that that's the thing that separates most self-taught devs that I know from other people is they just have amazing work ethics, okay? They will not give up. They will not back down. They will never say enough is enough, I give up, okay? And, and I'm just gonna stop doing this because it's beaten me. They don't allow that to happen. It's, a, I think, a rare uh, quality and characteristic to just have the the mindset that can just keep pushing and pushing and pushing even when things are hard and not giving up okay if you know that you have that about yourself then i think being self-taught is a no-brainer it's going to save you money and the content's there for free for you to do as you please when you would like to okay for me that is an amazing resource but not everybody can do that okay so the odin project itself i'm not going to compare it to other things like university and boot camps because i have not done either of those I think that they can be very good, but they can also be very expensive and they can also be very bad depending on which one you choose. Just like the Odin project may be very bad for you if it is not suiting your style of learning. Okay, but let's just uh, take a little quick dive in here. A couple things that I wanted to show you just about how challenging the Odin project is. Actually, let's start here. So this is all the, uh, the courses here, all parts. Just to give you a sense of how much content there is, and you can do this yourself, but looking at the foundations, you've got all of these lessons here, and there's going to be projects within that. And then once you've done foundations, you're going to either take the Ruby on Rails path or the full stack JavaScript path. Okay. Now, each one of these modules here is filled with lessons. So this alone on HTML, CSS has 20 odd lessons with projects. Then you're going to learn a lot about JavaScript and using that as a language. Lots of lessons here and projects. <clears throat> then there's advanced HTML, CSS, 15 more lessons. Then you learn a front-end framework, React, 23 lessons. Uh, then Node.js for the back-end, 19 lessons. And then finally, uh, whichever path you take, you'll do the getting hired, which just prepares you for the whole job search. It's a lot of content, especially when you think, depending on how much you're studying, one lesson is going to take you probably a day like unless you're studying five four or five hours or more a day to get through a lesson solidly i think it's going to be at least a day and then the projects themselves are going to take multiple days some of them are going to take weeks to finish the more complex projects 
So there's a ton of content. It takes a long time to finish the Odin project. And for good reason, because becoming a web developer is hard. It's not easy. I know that there's a lot of shiny fluff on YouTube about how cool being a programmer is, but it's bloody hard. And for the average person to pick this up from scratch, it re requires a rewiring of your brain and how to think and approach I think about and approach problems. Okay, coding is like nothing else that you will have learned in school. So for that reason, there's a lot of content. And the Odin project is designed to take you from someone who knows absolutely nothing, all the way through to having the skills to be a full stack web developer and be paid for it. <clears throat> and then on Reddit here, this is a fairly old post, six years old, but I don't think that matters. It's just a question about uh, self taught programmers, how long did it take you to get your first job and just scanning through here, uh, some people did it, I think the shortest I saw in this was seven months, uh, nine months. Other people took uh, several years. Okay, so some people did college degrees. All right, so you kind of get the picture here, and this is just a very quick snapshot, a couple years here, five years here. Okay, the average person, and it's a very common question in the Odin Project, how long is it going to take me? Uh, how long is a piece of string? It really depends on how quickly you learn and how much time you spend. But the quickest I've heard somebody do it in, I think was around six months. I don't think that they, they completed the, the Odin project. Uh, myself, I took eight months, but I only got to the end of the Ruby on Rails uh, component. So I don't know, maybe that's, I probably did just over half, maybe 60% of the Odin project, but it was enough to get me a job at that point. And that took me eight months. And I was studying every single day uh, I took maybe three or four days off in that eight months and I was studying on average probably four hours a day during the week and two hours a day on weekends. So I was putting a lot of time and effort into this. I don't know that you could really put much more in without burning out. So I was very mindful of that. Okay. So that's just to give you a sense of how long it can take. The average person, I think it's going to be reasonably at least a year to, to complete the whole thing. Uh, probably more like a year and a half. So it's a real investment of your time and your your patience and your commitment. Okay, it's really going to test those things. And what I also wanted to show you here was two observations that I made, uh, which I think are really quite interesting and somewhat telling of how challenging the content is and what the uh, um, the rate of success is at the end of the day if success is getting a, a job at the end of it. So here on the left, we have these stats that come up in the Discord for the Odin project. And we get about, what, we've got 750 to 850 users signing up every single day. So here we've got February 20th, 21st, 22nd of 2024. Okay, it's just a three day snapshot. But in my experience, it ranges between 600 to 900 users signing up every single day. It's a lot of people. But then on the right side here, we have the success stories. So these are all the people that have gone through the Odin project. I can't say all. This is this is people who have gone through the Odin project and have gotten a job and now paid as a web developer. And they come back to the Discord and they'll make a post here saying, hey, I finally got my job. Okay, now granted, it may not be everybody. There's people who've gone through the Odin project and did not make a post here. But I think most people who have gone through are pretty damn stoked that they finally got a job because it is so much work and you're just so happy that finally, you know, you, you reach that goal, you wanna share it with people. So I think that, you know, this is a fairly decent uh, capture of the, the number of people who are landing jobs. And you can see here, uh, again, this is just a quick short snapshot, but we got one post five days ago. We got one post 11 days ago, another post 22 days ago. So, you know, let's, if we got two a week, all right, you, have, might, you might have 10 people making a success story in a given month. Now compare that to 800 average signing up per day. You get a really good sense of the attrition rate of signups to success stories. And this is not to put anybody off. I don't, my intention here is not to put you off. My intention here is to plainly and clearly and honestly show you how bloody hard this this course is to complete all the way to getting a job if that is your goal okay it's it is challenging now i think it's good to know this up front going into it so you can be honest with yourself 
of whether or not this course is right for you. And if it is, you believe it is, then knowing while you're going through it that this is the reality. And it, I think what that will do is it'll, if you understand those things, it will help keep you motivated to complete this course. I think if you go into this expecting it to be easy, you expect to be able to finish it quickly, you're going to have a rude awakening and you're more likely to then just give up. If you go into this knowing it's going to be hard and you really have to gear yourself up mentally for it, then great. I think you're going to be uh, far more sustainable in your approach and you're going to have far more um, <clears throat> likelihood of succeeding your goal of getting to where you want to be. Now, I'm, I may be saying this and you may be saying, ah, you're wrong. Nobody tells me I'm going to you know, fail or I can't do something or I'm going to give up. And I think that would be great. You know, if you have that mindset, then that's the kind of mindset that perhaps you need to get through this, this stuff. For me personally, there were several motivating factors. Okay, I needed a job because I wanted to leave my old job. I did not like the company or the people where I was. So I really wanted to have a job, right? Have more freedom, uh, intellectual stimulation, uh, decent pay, and just doing something that was applicable, applicable rather across many domains. And that's what I love about programming was that it, it, gave, it gives me a tool, it gives me like a language that I can communicate in so many different domains of society. So there's really no end to what value you can add in society. That's what I love about coding. So uh, uh, where was I, what was I saying here? Um, if you are the kind of person that is motivated by multiple different things like that, and there's multiple drivers that are driving you to learn, then you're more likely to succeed than someone who's just dabbling and is unsure. You have to be certain that this is what you want in order to push through and learn this material. So like I was saying, I needed a new job. And around that is obviously the need for money and having a mortgage and a family and kids and things like that. I can't not have an income. So that's a really good motivator to get off my ass and learn this stuff. And the other thing that really motivated me was actually it was the fear of failure okay so and I, there's some psychology around this and i i can't i'm not going to provide any sources here but i think you can google this uh, because i have in the past and I, I found some stuff on it but the fear of failure is a far greater motivator than the uh, um, perceived success or joy that you will get from achieving something the perceived success or joy will wane over time but the fear of failure will always be there. And if that fear of failure is far greater than the pain of studying, then you will get off your butt and you will study every day as much as you need to, to get where you need to. And for me, it was the fear of failing because people were watching me. I had told people I am making this career transition. There were individuals in my old workplace that were, let's just say, it was not a great situation or scenario for me and doing uh, succeeding here was a way of proving them that I'm better than they thought I was. And to me, this was the fundamental underlying driving uh, force behind studying, getting up every day and just mentally pushing through the pain that comes with studying such an extensive curriculum. OK, not everybody's going to have the same motivations, but I think motivation is an extremely important part of this. So if you have if you have a lot of motiva motivations and good work, work ethic, then I think you're going to get through the Odin project and it's going to be the right thing for you. Okay. If you're the kind of person who you're doing this, maybe just, yeah, you, you might, you just want to dabble. You're not sure, but you just want to dabble or you need a teacher to hold you accountable or peers or you like to be tested and marked and have feedback, then the Odin Project is not going to be the right curriculum for you. Okay. Now, hopefully my ramblings here have given you a sense of how extensive this curriculum is, what kind of characteristics, qualities you might need uh, mentally before starting something like this, enough so that you can make a choice on what is right for you. Okay. I'm not saying the Odin Project is the best or the worst. It's right for some, not right for others. Right, and university boot camps 
they're great. I just didn't want to pay for them, but they may be right for you, right? The end goal is really uh, up to you to, to decide. Okay, that was uh, that was good. I, I think it was good to get some of that off my chest. I think it's important for you to understand what what you might need to succeed. And I would love to hear whether or not you agree or disagree, uh, what kind of motivations you have for doing the Orient Project, whether or not any of you have done a boot camp or CSC uh, diploma or, or, or undergrad, and why you chose the Odin Project, or maybe why you didn't. Are you on the fence? I've got lots of questions for you. Throw some comments down below, uh, give a like and subscribe, and hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, let me know. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.